Hi, welcome to Ginger Chick Rehab. If you are new and you're checking out this content for the first time, my name is Yvonne and I love to do secondhand finds. I love to make items over and I love to share DIYs and my vision and my process of how I do these. And today's video is no different. So I'm taking some repurposed goods. I just recently got an outdoor booth and I'm trying to add a little bit of Christmas decor in it, even though it is snowy here in Michigan that maybe when people are walking through the front door or of an antique mall, something might catch their eye that they may want to put on their own outside for the holiday season. So let me share the process with you all of what I'm doing. For my first repurpose craft, this is super simple. These are just some tea lights that I purchased at the holiday section at Hobby Lobby. So they were 60% off along with some of those jello molds that you seem to find when you're out thrifting or in antique stores in a random piece of leftover wood that has beautiful patina. So I want to go ahead and place all four of these little jello bun, whatever pans they are, <laughs> you know, whatever one would use them for. And then I need to cut off some of the extra. So I'm just using a straight edge and a pencil to make that mark. And then now I just need to chop off that end that I do not need. Now I have two ends that do not have that beautiful patina, so I'm just gonna cover them up with a little bit of the antiquing wax. And then next I need to drill some holes and get some screws to attach these cups to this board. digging in our scrap wood. Oh, I just fell in love with this. It's got so much texture on it and I do not want to sand it smooth. And I love that they have a lighter wood and there's a little bit darker wood. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to have Chris show you how to cut some trees. I My cutting skills are just minimal. <laughs> I am yet to be able to use the table saw or be brave enough to use the table saw yet. So what is he's doing is he's starting off from the bottom of the piece of wood and then he is just doing a 45 to make a nice triangle and then he is brave enough <laughs> he has no worries about using the table saw to cut off those extra pieces. I may have been able to cut these out on the bandsaw, which I'm not afraid of that tool. I've been using that tool a little bit, but since he is home and he's doing these crafts with me, why not have him cut them out? We actually cut out three, three different sizes. So I'm using the darker wood as one color, the lighter as another, and then I'm going to dry brush some of this green color fusion paint on that I had purchased last year. I don't use a lot of green, so I didn't need a bi big container. So the sample size is perfect. So I'm just really, this board has a lot of texture. So I'm just gonna let that bristles of the brush just hit and add some green to it.
Chris is sharing with me how to keep the bottom nice and flat, just putting another piece of wood along the bottom. I'm actually just brad nailing these together, one over the top of the other just slightly, but I want to put enough brad nails in there to hold it in place. you all have seen just those simple wooden stars made from rulers and pieces of wood but I'm trying to add some holiday decor some seasonal decor into our outdoor booth so I'm really trying to gear items that you can withstand the elements in our outdoor booth to attract people to want to buy them and put them on their outdoor area so I have a whole bunch of yardsticks that just came are kind of auction finds that have just been sitting around doing nothing and then chris actually took a two by four and started cutting me pieces down so i can do multiple stars and then while he's doing that i'm just going to go ahead and cut up the yardsticks making them into more of a workable so my stars aren't humongous so I have five yardsticks and I need five pieces. That way I can get at least two stars out using 10 pieces. I actually have one of these stars in my own outdoor decor. So I went and grabbed it to see how they placed <laughs> each one of the slats on top of each other to get them to lay flat enough that you would be able to nail them together. I'm double checking my brad nails to make sure that they're not going to go all the way through. They might go a tad bit and then I can just hammer them back down, but I want to make sure that my wood is nice and secure. And I am going to add a little bit of tight bond glue between the two pieces because these are out in the elements. It's fresh cut wood. It's dry, but it still might have some shrinkage. So you want to make sure you have a good bond there that it's not going to fall apart. I'm actually going to go ahead and paint all of these black the rulers the you know the yardsticks they aren't anything wonderful in what they say and their colors and what have you it's just more about the star and we're going into winter here in Michigan so white and natural may not show up as much as the black after I painted both sides yes I did paint both sides now I'm going to seal it in with some polycrylic the star that I have has some grapevine on it, though I don't have any grapevine accessible to me. I did just recently get this grapevine wreath in a box of auction finds, so I'm actually going to take it apart and use pieces and parts of it. So first off, it's really dry. If you try to work with it, it will just break. But if you soak it in water for 10-15 minutes, even less than that, it really doesn't take much because it's really dry, you'll be able to actually take that outer ring cut that off and then take pieces and parts of what you want. There's usually an outer wrap that I already cut off that they keep it all together. And now I'm just trying to see what sections I can get out of this. Now, before adding the grapevine to my stars, I want to go ahead and distress these. I want to give them more of an age, not I just got painted kind of look. And then to attach these on to these pieces of wood, I'm actually just going to staple them on. Now mine that I have, that I took the example from, their size of grapevine, um, they were able to make it smaller and it could hang from the across slat. But my shape, I can cut it apart, but I can't really make it any smaller without a ton of effort. So I'm just going to work with the size it, that it is. It's fitting this perfectly fine. So yes, I'm just going to go ahead and take some staples and staple it on. Then I'm actually going to take a little bit of paint and as you can see my little silver <laughs> staples are just shining bright so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of paint on those to cover them up.
So my next craft is going to be a DIY using this old staircase spindle along with some chain that came in a auction find and this beautiful patina board. I want to cut out the letters of believe on this board and of course the board couldn't be 21 inches long no it had to be a little bit shy of 21 inches it was seven letters 21 inches the math would have been perfect but in a perfect world that's how it would have gone but this is not a perfect world so i just need to do a little bit of a hair under three inches to get out seven pieces for this wood Now to make the letters, I went to my Cricut, but I, instead of doing all the whole word of believe, which would not made my letter size appropriate for each word or each letter, that I needed to actually type out the letter, then get it to the size I needed for each board. And I wanted them all to be the same corresponding sizes so they fit each one of those blocks. I actually just cut it out on cardstock, knowing that this is an unfinished wood. I love the patina of the wood. It's a little bit on the dirty side, so if I would have used a vinyl, the vinyl may or may not have stuck for one. And then also it might have taken off some of that patina that I love. So I just cut this out on cardstock, and now I'm taping very gingerly. As you see, the the letters almost fit the whole entire blocks and the masking tape isn't going to be as strong as what vinyl would. So my paint choice is to use a Kills paint primer that is interior and exterior. It's my normal Kills paint that I always use, but I am kind of gearing these to be in my outdoor booth, so I want to make sure that it's outdoor safe. And so I'm just using a makeup sponge that I get at the Dollar Tree store and just have a little bit of paint on there. I don't want them to go, I don't want the paint to squish underneath my stencil. So you just a little bit of paint um, and then just go slowly. And I actually want to variegate my little wooden titles, tiles, so I need to attach them all together so we have another piece of random wood that we are going to attach in the back. So I just need to flip my letters over and then attach that piece of wood. And to keep them variegated the way that they are, I'm just going to use a ruler to make sure that they're in line before attaching that piece of wood. Now that we have that done, Chris is going to come in and he is going to drill some holes to hang chains. So it's the fun of all these auctions that we have been going to is that we just keep getting all these random pieces and parts of hardware. Since he's a tool guy, you get a lot of hardware and this chain was in there. So we have some hooks and this will be perfect to hang from them. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of greenery to the top after putting a wire for hanging. All I did was wrap the wire around the inner part, that roundish part, just to give it something to hang. And then I kept it with the silver theme since the chain was silver to match. So 
So for my next is to use some of the buckets. I just cannot pass up buckets and I have quite a few in my stash and I thought I need to create something that somebody would like to buy and not have to put decor in themselves. So yet again, we have another one of the banister railing pieces and then some other slats of pallet wood that are dirty and I just absolutely love that patina. But I needed something to actually weigh the bucket down so if you do put it outside that it doesn't just tip over. So there again we're going to our stash. We're trying to figure out what we had and then we had this really huge piece of wood that came in something. So Chris cut it down that it fit inside and it's super heavy so that should weigh it down. Or you could have used stones or rocks or something but I wanted something that kept that straight up and so what he's doing now is he's attaching a piece of the wood to the bottom of the spindle so that way then he can attach that spindle to that big piece of wood But I need to cut down some of these pieces of pallet wood. I want them to kind of the small, the top one to be smaller than the bottom one and kind of make that tree shape going down. So he's just going to cut off the excess and we're just eyeballing what we need each side to be. I'm just making a little mark so then he can go over and make the cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to my Cricut again. I'm going to go ahead and cut out on cardstock again. Yeah, I don't think the <laughs> vinyl will work very well, but I'm just doing a couple different fonts just because it's fun to create something different. But I want my main to be that it's a farm and it's a U-cut and it's a tree. So you could actually leave this out a little bit longer if you wanted to, not just necessarily for Christmas. Now after weeding out my letters, I'm going to go ahead and attach these just using some masking tape. And now I've got some smaller pieces. I actually tried to use some spray adhesive, but that did not work either. So it was just one of those where I just had to hold down those little pieces and get my fingers all messy. So now I'm still doing that same technique, a sponge, a little bit of paint on there, holding down my cardstock and my little pieces so that they do not shift. And then to attach it, we're just going to eyeball center right in between my letters and then just bread nail them on. I know all four pieces of my wood will fit, but I want to make sure that I have one all the way to the bottom, one all the way to the top. I want a slight angle on one, so I'm going to go ahead and now attach the top one. leave it as is but I want a little bit more embellishment so I have this wooden star I'm going to go ahead and get this painted up black and attach it to the area by the U. I could have wrapped a ribbon around the bottom, but I just really wasn't feeling it once I got some greenery stuffed inside the bucket. But I did have, I did see, my inspiration did have like a wagon wheel going off of it with the numbers 
25 so I went to my stash to see what we had so we have some of these at random I think they're outdoor spigots <laughs> turns so I thought one's a different size than the other so I'm just going to hang those off there with some a black wire and then I did have a number two that was the same type of wood as the star but I didn't have a number five so I'm going to go ahead and crick it out a number five and then put it on this piece of a white wood that I have. So this is not a Christmas craft, but this was quite the transformation when we brought this white bench home from the auction house. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yes, you could tell this was an outdoor piece. So with a good power washing and a sanding and a new paint job, this is all cleaned up and ready for the outdoor booth. And it's a great way to display our items on for this makeover. So what did you think? Yes, this was fun. This was a little bit different than what the G Ginger Chicken Rehab usually does, but it was a lot of fun. I never really get a lot of opportunity to do these kind of items. So I hope that I have inspired you to look at secondhand finds, look at those trash to treasures, those spindles, those old parts that, nope, we don't paint them. We just style them and repurpose them as is. Okay, so the bench I did because that was a little bit a little bit too worse for wear. So give me a quick comment down below. Have I inspired you in any way to look at secondhand or salvage finds in a new way? And will you do any of these items? Will you make any of these items yourself? Or have you just enjoyed watching today's video? And as always, if you are part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit the subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to. Bye!